Hi, I'm Diane, the owner of Red Poppy Wig Boutique in the Kansas City metro area. And today I'm not going to talk about wigs and wig design. Um, I wanted to address something that comes up frequently in my business, which is insurance coverage of wigs. Now for a little background, of course, today, this is January 2023, so things do change. So I want to put that a, a timestamp on this. But I also want to let you know, I, I have been working with wigs and alternative hair products for about 15 years now. I've been a licensed cosmetologist over 40 years, but I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 1993 and have worked in this industry and in various healthcare places, if you will, for all those years since my diagnosis. So I've worked in medical coding, in with durable medical supplies, so I'm familiar with those things. And I, I, this comes up very frequently with the clientele that I have because women, a lot of women have lost hair for medical reasons, specifically cancer, if they're being treated for um, any kind of malignancy, and if there is medical coverage. So first and foremost, my suggestion is that you check with your insurance provider to see if your particular plan covers wigs for that type of hair loss. Now, I can tell you right now, today, Medicare does not cover any kind of wig for any kind of hair loss. It is considered cosmetic and there is no coverage. So that said, if you have TRICARE for Life, which is a wraparound for Medicare, it will be covered. And there is a slight possibility if you have a supplement to Medicare coverage that they may cover it. However, most supplements to Medicare follow what Medicare covers and they just fill in the gaps. So it's unlikely but it is possible. But even at that, you want to find out exactly what the insurance coverage requires of you to get that wig covered. So if you have Medicaid, which is a federally, partially federally funded and partially state funded program, it will vary state to state. Every state can use those monies in the way they find fit. And if it's set up so that wigs for a cancer hair loss because of chemotherapy or radiation therapy, they can choose to do that, but it varies state to state. So you would have to check within your state. Same is true for your individual policies, which would be, um, they're different in even company wide, if you have a United Healthcare or Blue Cross or Coventry, these big companies, individual policies will vary. So you want to go to those policies, to your navigator, to whoever is, is helping you with those insurance to find out what that company wants you to call the product and what it will require from you to have to submit for a claim. Now, generally speaking, most places that sell wigs are not gonna be in a network for insurance coverage. You have to have a contract with the insurance carrier and you have to accept what they're willing to pay. So chances are you're going to have to pay, if you do have coverage, you will pay out of pocket and then the insurance company will directly reimburse you for that if there is coverage. Now, one thing that every company that I've ever known that required that required insurance or that had coverage is that you will need a prescription from your physician, and that that I'm sorry, not just speaking, but the prescription will need to include what is your diagnosis code, what is called an ICD-10 code. And that stands for, and I'm gonna read it, so I'm saying it right, it is the International Classification of Diseases, the 10th revision. And that is just a numerical, and there's gonna be some um, alphabet in there as well that tells specifically what it is 
that you are being treated for. And that will be on the prescription. There is a lot of verbiage and talk in the industry about cranial prosthetics. Now, if in the medical coding word world, there is no such thing as a med as a cranial prosthetic. Um, although that is thrown out there a lot, what the code that you will need, and this is usually provided by your wig supplier, but if you don't have a wig supplier that provides this code, that's why I'm here. The, the code, this is called a HICPIC code, or that HICPIC stands for, and I'm going to read this too, Healthcare Common Procedure Code. So this is a supply code for, it would, could be whatever this medical supply is. So if you wear a CPAP or you do different things. So these are the codes that are provided for that. And the code for a wig is A9282. And that will, the, most likely your insurance carrier is gonna need that code as well to show them that this wig is a medical supply. So again, it's, it's whether the, the insurance company wants you to call it a cranial prosthetic, but the code is actually for a, a wig, any type of wig, just to kind of clear that up. But get the language from your insurance provider because that's what's going to matter and that's when it, what's going to have to get you paid. The other recommendation that I have for you is do not purchase a wig until you have those things in place. Don't purchase a wig until you have a prescription and find out what the insurance company wants and what they're going to need because they're going to find a way to, to not pay your claim if you don't follow their rules exactly. So get all those things in place before you even make a purchase. I will list just this overview of everything down below this video so you can refer to it and and because it's a lot of stuff thrown at you and I know very well that when you're going through cancer treatment and you're hearing all these things and it's just more stuff and I, I do appreciate that and so I want you to, to have that information down below. It's um, at this point in time there are more and more in private insurances that are coming on board to pay for wigs. I've seen everything from $250 to several thousand dollars to once a lifetime to every year to nothing. So again, it's imperative that you do that research and you check and see or ask your wig supplier to help you with that if that's at all possible. So I hope this helps a little bit. It may make it worse, I don't know, but just, just know that the, the information is out there. You have to dig for it and ask for it, but, um, and don't be afraid to do that. But again, don't make sure that you've got all these, I guess, all your ducks in a row, if you will, before you actually put money down towards a wig, because um, you'll want to make sure that you've got those things taken care of. Again, my name is Diane. I own Red Poppy Wig Boutique in the Kansas City metro area. Uh, please like and share this video. It helps me keep more videos coming out, and I appreciate your support. And, I, and also, please subscribe to my channel. I do talk more about wigs, generally, and um, I would be happy to help you in any way that I can. Thank you so much.